The J-15 Flying Shark is the first ever carrier fighter of the Chinese Navy. Ever since it's entered service in 2013, it has been widely ridiculed and dismissed by the military establishments in the West, especially in the United States. Western experts claim major deficiencies in the J-15's reliability, radars, and the limited weapons and equipment it can fly with when operating from Chinese carriers, or so they believe. But is the Flying Shark really as bad as it is widely viewed in the West? Or has the United States and its allies actually underestimated China's carrier fighter? In this video, we will take a fresh look at the controversy. Before we start, if you are enthusiastic about modern warships, systems, and even naval history, please do consider to subscribe to my channel, um, which is dedicated to these topics. Thank you. First, we need to establish some basic facts about the J-15. It is actually quite a large combat aircraft, with a length of 22 meters and a wingspan of 15 meters much bigger than the Russian MiG-29, for example. The maximum takeoff weight is about 33 tons, and as we shall see, much of the allegation against the Flying Shark is that it actually cannot take off into the air from an aircraft carrier at this weight. The airframe is based on the Russian Su-33, but inside the airframe it is fitted with indigenous engines, weapons, and electronics. The aircraft relies on a pair of the domestic WS-10A turbofan engine, which permits a top speed of Mach 2.4, and a combat radius of 1,500 km, at least on paper. By the way, the combat radius refers to the distance that the aircraft can fly, before it has to return to the carrier to refuel, or to the airfield, while also carrying a regular load of weapons. For air-to-air -air combat, the current version of the J-15 carries up to eight of the indigenous PL-12 medium-range air-to-air missiles, and four of the PL-8 short-range air-to-air missiles. These missiles have since been superseded by more modern Chinese air-to-air -air weapons, but they are still relevant in air-to-air -air combat, and there are credible reports that China is integrating improved air combat missiles onto the latest version of the J-15. Lastly, there is also a single 30mm autocannon carrying 150 rounds of ammunition for close-quarters engagement. The primary anti-shipping weapons of the J-15 includes the YJ-83K anti-ship missile and the YJ-91 anti-radiation missile. The YJ-83K has a range of about 200 km and a high subsonic speed. The aircraft is also capable of carrying direct fire ammunition, such as guided bombs, although typically it does not do so. Critically, the flying sharks that are currently in service do not have an active electronically scanned array radar, but rely on the relatively old Type 1494 Pulse radar. While concrete information is of course unavailable, an active phased array is seen as a modern standard that greatly enhances an aircraft combat capability beyond the visual range. There is no official information on the number of flying sharks that have been built, but most observers estimate between 60 to 70 airframes, built over four batches. I understand that an upgraded version of the J-15 has recently been revealed, but in this video I, I am only focusing on the airframes that are currently in service. So, why do American experts and defense think tanks believe the J-15 to be so terrible? We will summarize here the common criticisms of the J-15 in the West, 
before considering whether these critiques are well-grounded or exaggerated. One of the most common critiques is that the aircraft is severely limited in terms of its takeoff weight by the ski jump system on the Chinese carriers. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, quote, The J-15 is limited in range and payload by the Liaoning's lack of an aircraft catapult. The Liaoning's aircraft launching system relies upon a ski jump style deck instead of the steam catapults used by the United States and France, forcing the aircraft to expend considerable internal fuel during takeoff and thereby severely curtailing its payload. For instance, analysts estimate that the maximum takeoff weight for a J-15 from the Liaoning would be limited to approximately 62,000 pounds. By comparison, the USS Ronald Reagan can launch an aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of 100,000 pounds. Unquote. Over the years, the Western commentators have extended this line of critique even further by claiming that the J 15 would not have the capacity upon takeoff to carry anti shipping missiles like the YJ 83, and in fact, might not even be able to carry the medium range PL 12 air to air missiles. They also asserted that the combat's radius of the J-15 would be limited to just a couple of hundred kilometers, down from the 1500 kilometers on paper. Taking all of this together, the American experts, with great confidence, asserts that the J-15 would not stand a chance against the American F-18 Super Hornet in air-to-air -air combat. Now, let us dig a bit deeper into this line of argument. Is the J-15 really as bad as they say? First, as with all analysis, the information sources are very important. One of the most widely referenced articles by Western experts actually came from a news outlet in Taiwan, called Want China Times, which is now defunct. The article is short, lacks any sources, and makes a number of claims that are frankly implausible. For example, the article claims that the J-15 has an intended payload of 12 tons, whereas in reality it is only 6.5 tons. It's also said that the aircraft cannot carry the PL-12 medium-range missile when launched by a ski jump, which is ridiculous because a single PL-12 missile weighs only 200 kilograms. Even if you assume that the J-15 is taking off only with a 3-ton payload, there's still enough capacity to carry all 8 of the PL-12 missiles, in addition to its PL-8 short-range missiles. Lastly, the article asserts that the J-15 would somehow be limited to only 120 kilometers of attack range, which is a very strange claim, because the J-15's combat radius with a full internal fuel tank would enable 1500 kilometers, and the firing range of a YJ-83 missile launched from the air would reach approximately 200 kilometers to begin with. So I am inclined to, to say that this article is pretty rubbish. Anyway, the article is linked in the description. I encourage you to read it, and hopefully you can see why it is a problematic article as far as presenting factual information is concerned. It is unfortunate that the article has been circulated over the years to so many Western readers, which has misled everyone about the capabilities of the J-15. In fact, many Westerners seem to have believed that this is a publication from mainland China. Now, as someone who grew up in Taiwan, I will confirm that when it comes to China, there are a lot of media outlets with an agenda and a lot of exaggeration. Now, I am not saying don't read Taiwanese sources, no, 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 
but you need to take them with a large grain of salt. Now let us examine exactly what limitations are placed on the J-15 from having to take off from a ski jump. Statements from credible Chinese insiders with demonstrated track records suggest that, contrary to mainstream reporting, the J-15 is actually capable of taking off from the Liaoning or the Shandong with its maximum weight, including a full fuel tank and missile payload, but only under certain conditions. Specifically, the maximum takeoff weight depends on the speed of the carrier, which in turn generates headwinds. There are three positions for launching fixed-wing aircraft on the current Chinese carriers. One towards the aft of the carrier that allows for a long takeoff, and two forward launch positions that allow for short takeoffs. Reportedly, at a speed of 28 knots for the carrier, the J-15 can take off from the long launch position with a full takeoff weight of 33 tons, and the two forward launch positions with 28 tons. At a slower speed of 20 knots, the J-15 can take off from the long launch position with 31 tons, or just slightly below the maximum weight. So it is actually the case that the takeoff weight for the J-15 depends on the position from which it is launched on the carrier, the speed of the carrier, and presumably weather conditions at the time. Under ideal conditions, the J-15 can take off with a full fuel tank and a full payload of missiles. Of course, this does not mean that the ski jump system on the current Chinese carriers is ideal for launching fixed-wing aircrafts. Clearly, there are limitations in terms of the range of conditions that allow carrier aircraft to reach their full combat potential. Catapults allow the J-15 to be launched at their maximum takeoff weight under a greater range of conditions, and for all aircrafts, irrespective of their launch position. Catapults are also generally considered to be safer and more reliable, which should reduce the rates of accidents. So the point here is not to dismiss the limitations of the ski jump system, because these are very real, but clearly the, the picture is far more nuanced than what you will find in the typical Western defense circles. Western commentators have also latched onto the four accidents and the loss of a total of two airframes since 2010 as evidence of the supposed unreliability of the J-15. I think this is a bit exaggerated, in the context of the fact that naval aviation is a very recent undertaking for the People's Liberation Army. The operation of an aircraft carrier represents a whole new category of skills for the Chinese military. Accidents here and there have happened and will continue to happen. But the loss of two aircrafts through accidents over a space of 10 years is not exactly a terrible record. In fact, it is quite reasonable. As recently as late 2021, the UK's Royal Navy have lost a, an F 35B shortly after takeoff from an aircraft carrier. So, in my opinion, the PLA Navy isn't doing too bad. China has recently revealed an upgraded version of the J 15 Flying Shark, which appear to be close to entering service. Judging by the photos, various Chinese experts believe that the new and upgraded J 15 will be capable of operating with catapults and will probably form part of the air wing of the Type 003 aircraft carrier. They are also likely to use the improved air-to-air -air missiles and radar systems, including an active phased array radar. I won't be going into too much detail here, because this video has covered a lot of ground already, but just be aware that a new version of the Flying Shark is close to entering serial production and will address the weaknesses of those that are currently in service. To conclude,
the deficiencies of the J-15 carrier fighter, especially around its reliability and its maximum takeoff weight, have been exaggerated in Western military circles. There are certainly limitations associated with a ski jump launch system, but they do not prevent the J-15 from taking off with a full combat load altogether. In any case, the limitations have not been properly understood by Western think tanks. In any human competition, whether it be sports, economic, or military, underestimating your competitor is never a winning move. That is all from me on the J-15 Flying Shark. If you found this video interesting, please do consider subscribing to my channel where you can find more of this content. See you next time.